and welcome back to Project Hospital. Welcome back to Traumatology DLC, um, where we are progressing uh, through the insurances really rather well. We had a stream recently where we worked on completing the five days in a row with uh, no lost cases. Um, if you would like to see what happened between the last episode and this episode, there is a link in the description below for you to be able to watch that stream. And it was a Project Hospital stream, but it was also a nice chit chat uh, with uh, you peeps as well we talked about all kinds it was uh, it was great fun um so now uh we are back here at royal peeping hospital and we've got a new objective which is successfully finish six accident events in a row my goodness my goodness um and we are currently on bonus objective eight out of 12 so we're getting there we are getting there because of course once we uh work through this protect care insurance i can then um start sorting this hospital out to be uploaded to the workshop which is uh what we are really working towards here these days <laughs> um so well okay so we're not going to waste any time. It's uh, middle of the night, as we can see. It's half half twelve at night. We are going to kick off an emergency instantly, um, because why not? Now we need accident events, uh, which is this one here with the flames. So let's hit that. Uh, look, there's only three patients, so this isn't too bad. Um, okay, I need to deal with Rachel Hill first. And here it is, breaking news. There has been a road traffic accident on a major road in the region. Emergency services have been dispatched to the crash site. Your hospital should prepare for a high number of seriously wounded patients. It seems like we have three, um, so that's good. Um, not too, it's, it's not too bad, eh? It's not too bad. Let's wait for them to arrive. Oh yes, and thank you to the Discord. Somebody discovered on the Discord this button in the ambulances screen. This button here, automatically take over all patients delivered by ambulance or helicopter from the trauma DLC. Um, now, of course, I always rush the trauma and take over all patients that come in. And now with this button, ah, it's done automatically. So that's, that's pretty cool. Uh, thank you, Discord. Here comes an ambulance. It is one of our guys. It's Peter. Right, let's have a look here. Here's, here's Peter. Um, we'll put him on code blue. Actually, this is not looking too bad um, in the grand scheme of things. So he definitely needs a CT, but I don't think there's actually anything here we need to do for him at all. There's nothing here that's going to be urgent in any way other than the fact that he's in pain. So what we're going to do, we're going to send him straight to the orthopedic department and get him straight into a CT as well there it is um how long do we have to do this 12 and a half minutes we've got left on this emergency i mean it's going pretty well it's going uh pretty well i mean he once he's had his x-ray we can get him um potentially surgery no, it might not be and then he's done so that one wasn't too bad at all now during the stream we had this uh, Kate Green here, she's just had her CT, she's got all sorts going on and I have now uh, arranged for her to get her two surgeries uh, consecutively so that she shouldn't need to travel back to the ICU between her surgeries, so that's good and we seem to have done all the important scans and found everything we need to deal with urgently, um, so that's pretty good. Somebody else is arriving, who's this, who's this? Uh, it is one of our emergency patients, again not too bad. Not too bad, we absolutely know what it is. There's nothing here that's chronically urgent. So once they are stabilized here, again, I'm going to send them straight to orthopedy. Um, off they go. Um, and because we already know what the problem is, we can send him into his um, head surgery instantly. So that's, that's what we're going to do um, because there's nothing here um, that I need to worry about right this second. And another ambulance has arrived. Here they are. And it is our third and final person once again can go straight to orthopedy and get some arm surgery so let's wait for them to be stabilized so um orthopedy it's been a while since that department's really had any kind of action so uh and they've potentially got three surgeries ahead of them now um so we should probably go and check all of that out because we've sent them all instantly off to orthopedy mm. so maybe we should check on them all Peter is currently on his way for his CT scan. So we can find out exactly what needs to be done with Peter here. 
but Peter Adams, lots of Peters, is going straight into surgery right now. So they're just getting him to surgery. So this will be the first surgery. Now I do believe I have two surgical teams on orthopedia at night, but I'm not 100% sure. Now Barbara here was from the stream last night and we can see that we've sent her for a CT and we have found that she needs some drugs quite urgently, otherwise she'll crash. Um, but otherwise Barbara Thomas I think will be fine very soon. But that was something that was outstanding from the stream. Um, but that looks like we've got it under control now. We are arriving in surgery. This is great. Now, let's have a look. Here's our surgical teams. Let's just go into management. Orthopedy. Yes, so we do have two night surgeries here. Um, what's interesting, we've got... Oh, no, so we've got one surgery team in the day and two at night. That's interesting, isn't it? I wonder why I've done that. But there we are. That's what we've done. It's actually strangely going to work for us. Um, I think it's because it's a fairly quiet department. So the idea is that I have an additional team and I can move them between day and night um, depending on what shift I need them on. So if daytime comes and we're still doing surgeries, I'll just move that one that's on night onto day as well. <laughs> I've done that quite a few times. It's because it is a fairly quiet department now, orthopedy, uh, since all the DLCs came out. Peter Martin confirmed so he won't actually need surgery so that's that's something his can be done I believe in the diagnostic room yes okay that's great and given that we have two surgery teams at night that means that Rachel will also be able to go um, straight in for her surgery uh, once we've got her to her room <gasps> chopper is leaving it's great to see surgery is underway nice second Rachel Walker goes in for surgery we will complete this particular emergency where is she? I think she's in this bed here so she's just waiting on the surgical team I would imagine they're preparing there we go event successful so she's instantly being transported uh, for treatment and it is done that's 38 successful events in a row now 20,000 doubloons beautiful now we're going to waste no time by getting in another emergency. So um, we, let's go up to uh, here. Uh, again, not too bad in terms of numbers. Fans of two football clubs have clashed and the brawl has resulted in a large number of injuries. Significant police pressure in the area has allowed responders to treat a large number of patients at the scene, but local hospitals should prepare for an increased number of trauma patients. Um, and we've got five coming in. So again, we should be able to do this pretty quick. We've got 15 minutes to complete it. Our first one is in. He has a fractured finger. <laughs> Right, okay. I mean, that's not too bad. <laughs> we could put his... It's an arm cast uh, for this. So, I mean, we can do that here. So, might as well, I suppose. Or should we just get... No, we'll just get rid of them because we know we've got four other com four others coming. So, we'll just get their arm plastered uh, upstairs. That'll be absolutely fine. Um, but orthopedy is getting busy again, right? It is. Now, I know that Peter Adams was a part of the last thing but that he seems to be profusely bleeding after his surgery <laughs> so we've definitely got some problems here uh so um i mean we need to do an interview and a physical here anyway uh, because we haven't looked for any of these other uh smaller symptoms at all um uh, and hopefully we'll be able to with this physical also find where that bleeding is coming from i think we need to find where that bleeding is coming from we've had an ambulance and a helicopter arrive and we have found a surgical cut that is bleeding here on peter so we're going to give him something for that um so that we can stop it that'll be great um so is this it is jessica that's just come in again it's looking very orthopedy based um so let's send her straight there um, and we're going to um, x-ray upper limb by the looks of it looking at what we can see here not lower limb upper limb there we go and let's get her x-rayed for that Joseph arrived and actually did have an emergency he was hemorrhaging it seems like they've taken care of that as soon as he came in so that's good um, but we are going to take the time I think here to do a physical um, given given his condition but then after that 
it looks like we need to do lower limb x-ray um, for, for Joseph. Um, yeah, if, if, if we get that far. I say that because a physical, yeah, might diagnose him. So he has a deep wound on the leg. Um, so that's it really. Uh, he needs a wound closure, which we are going to do here. Um, I'm also going to do the emergency clear care. We'll put a bandage on it. We'll do painkillers. We'll, we'll, we'll do the whole lot here. And then we'll send him to orthopedy to rest. Because uh, they are getting quite busy up there. Charles Walker here has come in. Um, so he has a cerebral contusion. Uh, he's also fainting here. So let's give him some oxygen. Um, so this could be pretty bad. Um to be perfectly honest now we've dealt with this but we need to make sure that he doesn't have any intracranial hemorrhaging there's no blood around here so he probably doesn't but it is definitely something that we're going to need to check out so let's send him to the icu we're doing quite well here we've got two left that we're waiting on here's linda walker right now okay let's put her on code blue so they're already going to do the emergency care and stop this hemorrhaging so that's good this is a good start. We'll let them do that so we can stop all this very clear bleeding and issues. But ultimately, again, I think it's going to be um, upper limb x-ray, isn't it? Nothing too crazy. But cardiology, um, I mean orthopedia, getting very busy. Looks like Joseph Lee is all taken care of. So we are going to send him to orthopedy just to rest up. Yeah. It seems that Linda has started to crash. So if, uh, there's no there's no doctor here. So I think it's probably because it's not that busy in here. Can we get her a blood transfusion? Stat, please. Who are you? Who are you? Robin Dickens. <laughs> Somebody else is crashing. What on earth is going on here? Oh, but they're on the ICU, so this shouldn't be quite as bad. Let's uh, arrange life support. Um, we had to move Charles to the ICU because we need to... Um, Get him into the CT. Must get him into a CT. Um, and moving him is always going to cause problems, that's for sure. Oh, looks like Charles is bleeding. So it's just as well we're getting him to the CT. Blimey. Karen Green, uh, Kate Green, rather, is uh, looking good. I think she's going to be fine now. We've got her, yeah, all diagnosed up, treated. She's had a lot, and not she? She's had a lot going on here by me well done Kate for pulling through currently waiting on Jessica Miller to get her arm cast and also Linda Walker right she is still just sitting here with nothing happening why why is that happening we need to get her a blood transfusion really quickly Charles does indeed have hemorrhaging so now we can send him to surgery right so they've given her a blood transfusion so i think she is probably largely out of the woods um but you know what we're going to do this from here we are going to send her for the upper limb i think we're going that's lower <laughs> upper limb there we go um but yeah i think she oh hang on a minute before we do that we should do a physical we haven't checked any unstoppable bleeding let's do this first she might need a pressure pressure bandage my goodness what an oversight um Robert here, not part of anything that we need to worry about. He doesn't seem to be bleeding at the moment either to suggest that he has this, but we will send him for a CT and do all the usual things. But our main concern right now here is going to be Linda Walker because yes, Jessica Miller's had her arm cast. Charles, of course, is now going into surgery. Things have progressed with Charles to the point where he needs to go to surgery. Um, so he is undergoing stabilization. Now he's being transported. So he is now ticked. Excellent. So it is now all down to Linda. Let's see if we have any unstoppable bleeding. That's the first thing. Um, ultimately, she's probably she's going to need arm surgery um, so we could probably pick either one and send it send her for it but i really don't think we need to be rushing so what we will do i think we'll send her to orthopedy now and we will arrange for the upper limb x-ray and then we can get her in uh, for the surgery yeah right we finally have a diagnosis here on linda walker so we can get her for the arm surgery the second she goes in for arm surgery we would have, we would have completed our second accident event this is going really well although morning has arrived 
Um, and look, we've got lots of people coming in uh, that are looking rough. Like she, she's uh, on the verge of collapsing, so is he. Uh, we've had somebody collapse here very recently, so uh, we're going to start getting busy here, but that's not going to stop me. I like the challenge of the hospital being really busy, so we will be continuing, even throughout the day in the morning rush and everything, um, to take on these accidents. <laughs> So what I'm going to try to do here is those that are coming in um, through the front door, uh, if they are on the verge of collapse, I'm just putting them onto code blue but not taking them over or sending them to trauma or anything like that just to see if, um, uh, you know, I can not worry about them as much today. The, the hospital is pretty good so by this should work uh, by and large, um, I would have thought. Um, I hope so. Um, but we'll just get them all to the top of the queue, um, which will certainly help. Uh, but it also means that I shouldn't need to pay them much attention. Because uh, the hospital's pretty good at what it does. Uh, this is a little bit concerning. I'm just going to arrange that instantly. Um, so who else have we got here? He's not looking too good. So I'm just going to put them all on code blue, which means they'll always be at the top of the queue. Whatever queue they're in, um, they will be rushed through, which is pretty important. There we go, we did it! 39 events in a row, another 20,000. Excellent, we are not going to wait, we're going to kick off another one instantly. There has been a road traffic accident uh, on a major road in the region. Emergency services have been dispatched to the crash site. Your hospital should prepare for a high number of seriously wounded patients. We have three again! This is great! We're smashing through these! Trouble's arriving. Is it going to be one of our lot, I wonder? Oh, I love it when the chopper comes in. Yeah, there it goes. This has to be one of ours, right? Let's see. Boom. It is. It is. It is one of ours. Right, so it might not be orthopedia this time. Because um, that department's getting quite busy. So I'm up for these accident patients needing a different department. Um, and we have a, a fairly nice mix here. Not too much happening in the orthopedia department. We will start with the physical and get them onto a code blue instantly. We've just heard an ambulance arrive. Who have we got here? Ah, yes, we have a Pete Green. So we've received two of them then. Uh, let's get them onto a code blue. And here is the selection. Very similar to uh, the selection. Uh oh, we are full. It looks like what we're going to have to do is open up this room, uh, which I never like opening. Oh, we're in the wrong department just because it's difficult to see what's going on in there and I like to have a nice visual while we uh, look at things but that's fine we're in desperate need he needs he needs somewhere to go and his list is very similar to the person that came in on the chopper um, it would seem uh, so we've got chest injury breathing problems so we're going to do um, yeah physical listen to the chest the thorax um and looking at other bits that we have here we're going to take blood pressure i also think that we should do some heart monitoring um and we'll just see what that gets us for now blimey and actually just a physical from the what the rachel that came from the chopper look it's got us down to three one is orthopedy typically one is orthopedy so let's listen to the chest um looking at these we might also uh, do some heart monitoring. See, see if we can find anything from those. Also, actually, thorax. Yeah, let's let's do those things. Uh -huh. uh, reason being, I can see heart here for cardiology, uh, chest here uh, for breathing problems, and then thorax um, also here on this heart one. Um, we might be able to whittle this down to something on that list. Our last person has arrived for this emergency and I don't think they're going to fit into trauma just for the moment. But to be honest, it doesn't look like there's anything too chronic going on in here. It does look like another orthopedy one. Uh, we will uh, probably once they've been stabilised, just send them straight there to be to be honest. Um, we will focus on getting somebody out of here. Um, I mean, this looks free. I mean, we could see. Does he go? I don't think so. Um... We could see about getting this person moved fairly quickly, although they're not the best person to be moving quickly, <laughs> to be perfectly honest. Um, no. So it looks like 
Daniel's going to be coming back here. Um, he, he's going to need to go to internal medicine. We do have some people here that are starting to go through an awful lot of uh, examinations. I'm not ready to move them to anywhere in particular. Uh, look, we do have Rachel Garcia, though. Um, we've managed to find a regular heartbeat. So let's give her beta blockers to that. And then I think what we will do is send her straight to cardiology. And she is part of this emergency. Um, and she needs to go for cardiovascular surgery. Uh, so we're going to do that ASAP. And that will make some space here. We have now had two patients crash in the waiting room. We've got this gentleman here, this gentleman here. Uh, so things are getting quite desperate at trauma. <laughs> I do enjoy this though, completely overloading it. If I didn't have all these emergencies going on, it wouldn't be like this. But then where's the fun? That's what I say. Where's the fun? So, hey, we're doing quite well at whittling this down. My goodness. Oh, well, this is good. So Peter Green can now be sent to orthopedy uh, by the looks of it. Let's get him sent away and they can get him in for a chest x-ray, which is something that he desperately needs. Well, not desperately needs, but he needs that to diagnose him and um, and get him off of this department, which is something we're very keen for right now, because look, <laughs> mind you, as soon as he's stabilized, we can send him away instantly to orthopedy also. So that, that'll be pretty good. Uh, yeah, there's nowhere in trauma for this guy. We know we're working on it. We are working on it. I think with this lady, I will stop these examinations. We will arrange the center straight to infectious diseases. Um, and we will arrange for serologic testing just to keep an eye on her. Um, but yeah, that'll help get her out. Um, I'm not sure about this lady, but you know what? I don't like the rate at which this is going. We might send her also um to infectious diseases um yeah and keep an eye on her because she's very potentially on the wrong department <laughs> so that would be three moved off and we've got three waiting to get on um so let's hope that they are moved away pronto because as we do have people that are in desperate need anybody here looking uh, they're okay everyone else here is okay for the moment Right, somebody is, yeah, no, I know, somebody's being moved right now. This gentleman here, I believe. This is good. This is good, right. That's it. Off you go. Then I'm assuming, yep, you're coming. Now we're going to move him away instantly. She's going. That's great. So that's somebody else from the floor in the other room. <laughs> okay, so we're going to wait for Daniel to be stabilised. As soon as he's stabilized, we're going to get rid of him again. He is stable. So let's go to orthopedy. There we're going to arrange um, a lower limb x-ray. Lower limb x-ray. There it is. And he will be fine. Lots of stretches coming in here. There we go. These two are going. This patient is about to leave the clinic. Um, so I guess they've been waiting a long time, have they? Where are they? Where are they? He's here. So what is he waiting for? An angio at present. Okay, well, let's see about hospitalizing him. Let's hospitalize him. I think that'll be the, the best thing here. Here we go. Two more patients coming in from where they were. So we've had a pretty good clear out here. He's going shortly as well. So that's good. We might actually be able to close this space down. That could be good. Oh, this is a returning patient. You are new, though. Yes, you're somebody that was in the corridor. That's that's something. That's one. But there is definitely space for the second. And now Daniel, we can send to internal medicine for his thoracentesis. Uh, we'll also get him some painkillers. Send him to get some rest as well. Um, don't need to worry about him anymore, I don't think. That will get done. We'll leave him on a code blue, though. Um, so we've got this patient here. And we should be getting the other patient shortly. They have both been moved, yeah. So, coming here, are we? Where is he? Where is he? <laughs> I'm waiting for, I can't. 
They were they were only here. They seem to have disappeared. Oh, that guy did leave. We did lose one. He did leave. Oh well, doesn't matter because we're not doing that that uh, that part of the event anymore. It's all good. Um, so what we got? William Martin. Um, oh yeah, so he can now uh, leave here as well. Uh, we can clear him out. That's great. Rachel Garcia is in for surgery, so she is the first one now that is ticked here. Excellent. Also, I'd just like to point out here that Mary Brown has, uh, I told her to go to infectious diseases, not knowing uh, what illness she actually had, and they have put her into regular hospitalisation. So in the last episode, I sent somebody to infectious diseases, not knowing whether they really needed to be there, and they put them on to... Um, uh, isolation wards and that's unusual um, they will normally put them into regular unless they have some unless the game knows that they have um, an infectious disease that can spread um, and then it'll automatically put them into isolation which is something that I disagree with but that's what it does um, and somebody said in the comments that it does it out of a precautionary measure. No, it doesn't. And here is uh, <laughs> proof of that. It normally only ever puts them onto isolation if the game knows that they have some sort of uh, spreading illness. Um, otherwise, it just shoves them onto regular. And, and Mary Brown here is, is a good example of that. We've got lots of infectious diseases here. Um, and I, in fact, she had a lot more going on. And so I just said, put her onto this department and it's put her onto regular hospitalization and that's generally what happens unless i just uh, they go to isolation and i later discover they do have something that can spread um so it was quite unusual that one uh in the last episode daniel hall is going for his uh lower limb x-ray which is great so we can find out which one of these it is and uh, most likely get him into surgery uh, although it could be a leg cast actually a lot of these are leg casts um, and one is numbing ointment. Uh, so no surgery for this guy, which is a good thing, because we're quite busy in orthopedia at the moment, it turns out. Uh, Peter Green. So where are we with Peter Green? Ah, he's currently having his chest x-ray, so we can work out what's going on here, whether he has broken ribs or a chest contusion. Excellent. He has a chest contusion. So he just needs some numbing ointment. So we will get him back. To, he's actually on orthopedy, even though it's just an emergency thing, emergency thing but that's fine. Uh, as soon as he gets that numbing ointment, he will be a tick. Fantastic. Uh, Daniel Hall. Ah, Daniel Hall has a simple fracture of the femur. There we go. So we just need to get him into a leg cast as well, um, which is done. They did it right there. That's great. Or they're going to send him for treatment right now. Yeah, they're going to send him for treatment right now. Uh, so that's two ticks. We'll also actually arrange an interview and a physical there as well. Um, ooh, problems happening over here. Peter Green is in his room. Yes, I did break that bed. Don't worry. There's somewhere else for her to go. So we just need to wait for a doctor over in the office. Is somewhere here just to prescribe some numbing ointment it could happen at any moment although there was no doctors there was there <laughs> it's just have to sit here and wait which we can do for eight and a half minutes before we fail always oh, going to the toilet probably a good thing shall we watch peter green go to the toilet <laughs> might as well got nothing else to do oh except mary here oh yeah do the differential we're too busy watching uh peter green <laughs> here he goes other people using the toilet so this should help here's that uh, bladder issues lovely i see it washing his hands good guy he's a good guy i just need some numbing ointment he's been hospitalized for this <laughs> came in via ambulance for this it's absolutely ridiculous we can see here that peter's doctor is blaubeer cushion who's a patron of mine and they are currently busy uh, with Daniel Hall <laughs> there we go <laughs> must have been somebody else that did it for us that's fantastic I was just thinking oh my god are we gonna have to wait for this to be over but no maybe maybe a nurse does the numbing ointment I mean it would be a pretty simple one to do um I've lost them I've lost them Peter Green he's oh he's been removed I picked up the doctor and lost Peter Green uh is he still walking around here is he is he this one no is he this one? He's this one. There we go. Numbing ointment. Maybe the nurse did it. Don't know. 
It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. The point is, is it's done. And we have now done 40 successful events in a row. That's another 20,000 doubloons. We've actually done, in a single episode, three of these accidents out of six. Now, the next episode, we'll do the other three. And that's where it's going to get really tricky because I'm not going to wait for this hospital to empty or calm down or things to get easier. Oh, no. I'm going to continue to keep the pressure on and uh, keep the hospital running at uh, crazy high levels. And we can see, actually, how the... Um, how these new lab works uh, deal with it and new blood works um, you know how they deal with the the hospital being under such pressure because I am doing blood work on lots of other patients that are coming in um, so yes the next episode uh, should be very interesting as we continue to push this hospital to the absolute limit if you enjoyed the video please like and subscribe thank you to all my patrons for their continued support